Well, reading in First Samuel, the it's the story of uh, how Saul became king. In <laughs> initially, his uncle tells him to go out and find the the donkey that had ran off, and so he goes up to a priest, and the priest uh, sends him to Samuel. And then Samuel tells him he's the anointed one and he's going to be the new king of Israel. And then he gets him, he, he sends him to an angel of God who takes him to the, the lost donkey. <laughs> and he, so now he's like just encountered, you know, these three, you know, two, uh, a priest and Samuel the prophet and, and then an angel of God. And that leads him to the donkey. And But he tells him that he's going to be the new king. And he goes home. With the donkey, and his uncle's like, "Did you find the donkey?" I'm like, "Yep." He doesn't say nothing. <laughs> he doesn't tell him what all happened. But the next day, he's basically ordained the king. And then the Gileads get attacked by the Amorites, and they try to make a deal with them. They want to have a, a treaty with them or a covenant with them. And the, the Amorites are pretty unreasonable. They say, "Well, okay, we want we want you to." Gouge out the right eye of all, 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 all your all men, and the Amorites are like, well, give us seven days. They didn't kind of like deal, and so they sent letters out, you know, message out for help, and it got to Saul, and so Saul takes a yoke of oxen, which means two oxen, and he cuts them up and he sends out pieces to all over the territories, you know the the different territories of Israel and basically says and he tells them that if you don't join me in this fight for Gilead against the Amorites I'm going to do this to your oxen and so he's get like you know 70,000 and they they wipe out most of the, the Amorites okay now there was a certain group that was not um, on board with Saul being the king and the ones that were with Saul wanted to, to kill him. But Saul's like, oh, no, no, this is God's day. All right, and, you know, we're going to celebrate God's day. And he didn't kill him. That was, I thought, awesome, amazing leadership uh, on Saul's part. I just was really impressed by that. So I get to, I get to church, and we're sitting in a Bible basics class. And I get a text from the troop leader for Trail Life saying that they decided the 31st of August the boys want to do a cookout for the men and the the boys from the church promoting Trail Life. So I go and I tell a couple of the pastors and, and one of them is like, and I'm telling them, you know, we've got no participation from the church even though we're sponsoring this group. Right? And it's been miraculous the how these boys have really been developed. And uh, and he tells me, we can't make the boys do it. I go, I don't agree with that. And I remember Roy Jones Sr.'s quote, you know, uh, children don't know, you know, they all they want is attention. They don't know the difference between good attention and bad attention. And it's my job. To teach them the difference. And if you, you know, as adults and parents, you know, we need to make them do the right thing and have the right choices. And it'll stay within the rest of their life. The uh, And then Pastor Richardson gets up given the word and he's talking about the story of Legion, you know how Christ is crosses the sea, and then it, and he gets to, he gets to shore, and there's this crazy man, and uh, and then he's possessed by a legion of demons, like six thousand, you know, six thousands and a legion, a Roman legion. So that's the estimate of how many demons were in this guy, and the demons are begging. Jesus not to torture 
germ and, and so they asked to be you know put into these herd of hogs there was 2000 of them and they when they did that they all ran up into the lake and drowned and you know when he's talking um man my mind is just racing on all the things that, that are coming to me uh, uh about this all right and it's a uh, you know, afterwards he's talking about you know our own demons and how you know are we the same people that we are on church on Sunday? You know, are we are we having challenges with porn and pornography or or you know other uh, other you know challenges and issues? And, and I'm sitting there, so here I am going, I don't got none of that. But the spirit goes to me, yeah you need to be more of a leader. I'm like, oh, thanks. Thank you very much. <laughs> and so that's what I asked to be, you know, prayer for from uh, Michael Caballero um, at the end of the service was to be um, a stronger leader. And so today they're giving the state of the church address at six o'clock at the, at the church. But there's just been so much uh, going on in in, the, in the, my meditation, and oh man, you know one of the other pastors started talking about, you know, being focused right now, you know, being in the present, and so there's the conscious mind, subconscious mind, okay, and the the uh, spiritual mind, I guess you'd say, and really understand it your conscious mind is a switching mechanism it's choosing to go uh, into your subconscious to dig up you know past lessons or feelings and then to your spiritual or future you know to be to look forward into the direction you want to go and so your your sub your conscious mind it's not only dealing with your conscious or subconscious and spiritual, but also past, present, and future. And to be really in your, it's, it's not so much being in the present, but being in your conscious present. Okay, so as you are in the present, it's like you're a train at a switching station. Okay, so the present right now what you're doing right now the decisions you make right now in the present take you to somewhere in the future and you either choose the direction you're going or it's going to be randomly chosen for you or chosen by somebody else okay so it's always better if you identify what you want in the future how you want things to be the future how you want to be in the future and in the present moment making sure what you're doing what you're saying who you're around what you're listening to what you're eating how much sleep you get all right and make sure all of that is being done specifically intentionally to take you to where you want to go and you can even look back on the past to pass successes to choose to discern how to make the right choice to where you want to go how to recognize the feeling of things that were good while you were doing them and or that exuberant feeling for achieving what you wanted to achieve and putting that as in the future toward your future goal Okay, so what I just did was definitely engage my conscious mind choosing in the present how to get to and how to be where I want to have what I want. Okay, and that's the 
true.